in the tech space, you see a lot of people changing jobs every year, or every two years or getting fired. Look at what, what's happened over the past few months where tech companies are just laying off people. But you have an international team of 24 people and hardly anyone has left. Or Has anyone left? One resignation in five years. Wow. Um, one. And that was a, a mutual parting of ways. It was a, a scientist who does primarily R&D. We'd finished the R&D aspect of what we were working on. And, yeah. and so he wanted to move on to a firm that was doing more R&D. And we replaced him with a commercialization engineer, which was the you know, kind of the plan all along. And I don't want to be one of those people who's like, a business is a family. No, a business is trading labor for money. Mm -hmm. Let's be real. We're trading labor for money. You're, right yeah. now, you and, and your crew here in the studio, we're trading labor for money. Mm -hmm. And you can't forget that as an employer, mm -hmm. right? Your employees owe you nothing. And I think that the labor force is starting to wake up and realize that. That's why you see people jumping jobs all the time, is mm -hmm. that they don't owe you crap. This this idea that you can like say, oh, we're building something super important. We're going to change the world of networking. So? <laughs> Who cares? Can I afford my bills? <laughs> right. And I think a lot of these startups, they, they say, you know, come work for us to get this great experience. Come work for us to help change the world. Come work for us for this, that and the other reason. They forget that you're exchanging labor for capital. We try to remember that as a as a business. We don't ask people to take pay cuts because uh, the business is struggling. When the business struggles, when we're running out of out of money, you know, it gets, gets cut. It's my salary, <laughs> my co-founder's salary, my other C-suite member's salary. We cut that to zero and we pay everybody else on time. We don't make excuses because they're trading labor for capital. So that's that's the most important concept to remember. And, and the other thing is that these are human beings, not cogs. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, I believe in the efficiency of a relaxed person. If you're not under pressure, if you're not stressed and pulling your hair out, if your boss is not all over you, you're generally more productive if you're an adult. Right. If you're yeah, yeah. if you're, you know, new to the workforce or you don't really know what you're doing and, you know, you think you can slack off all day, you're probably not the right fit for my company. But we have an extensive interview process to weed those kind of pe people out. Yeah. Um, but we hire adults who get their work done. Mm -hmm. We don't have them clock in or clock out. We don't do shifts. We are project based. We assign them. Hey, I need you to get this done by this date. And then we don't check on them. Hmm. And then they turn their, their work in by that date. And that's it. Like there's, there's no micromanagement. There's no real management. We have a board, progress board sort of thing. So everybody's working towards completing projects. But, you know, other than maybe say monthly check-ins, we don't micromanage these people. We hmm. let them get their work done on their own pace. And like different people work differently, right? Like some people are really productive between 8 and 10 a.m. and then not productive again until 4 p.m. That's just the way people are. And if I force somebody to work eight to five, when they're productive eight to 10 and four to 10, then I'm not getting maximum productivity out of my employee. Mm -hmm. I'm not getting the, the highest value for my dollar and salary. We also require 20 days off per year, uh, 20 work days off per, week, per year. We also require them to take off for federal and local elections. So you get the whole day off anytime there's an election in your local precinct or whatever, mm -hmm. um, you must take that day off. You don't have to vote, but we encourage you to. Mm -hmm. We want you to participate in the democracy that you're a part of, right? Yeah. So the other thing is like, you know, you got to go to the DMV. You got to go pick up the dry cleaning. Yeah. You, you have a childcare emergency, right? If you're on shift and you're being micromanaged and your boss is up your butt about it, then like, you're not going to want to stay. Five of my employees have gotten married. Four of them have had babies mm -hmm. while working at an early stage startup. That seems risky, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But they know that we're there for them. They mm -hmm. know that, you know, when they have a childcare emergency, their kid gets sick. They get to have time off. And the result here is, again, one resignation due to literally just a company changing stages. We've fired two people for misbehavior, and that's it in five years. And, and we they, get to keep all this tri tribal knowledge in, yeah. right? And that's really important because, you know, we have trade secrets. We have all these things. Like, in order to understand how we do what we do at a technical uh, level, it would take years of study. True. These people who've worked with, with us for five years have done those five years of study through mm -hmm. practical work. Mm -hmm. Losing one of them would be horrible for the company, <laughs> right? So treating them like human beings, remembering that we're trading labor for capital or, yeah. or capital for labor, letting them set their own schedules, not only keeps my business efficient, um, it enables me to to pay people well without being like exorbitant. So it keeps mm -hmm. my burn rate low. And I get to keep all of that tribal knowledge in the tribe. And I think that's a much more effective way than like, oh, let me hire 100 salespeople and then fire 80 of them because I realize that none of them are hitting their quota. Like that yeah. doesn't work. Man. Yeah.